Hello everyone! So occasionally I get questions about the supplies that I use in my photo card binders. So I wanted to do a comprehensive video where I, you know, do a whole overview of everything that I use, all the supplies that I use, so that I can link it to people who would like to know more. Of course, since I'll be going over a lot of items, there will be really detailed timestamps in the description in case you want to skip ahead to a particular item that you're interested about. So in this video, I'm going to be going over binders, pocket pages, uh, photo card sleeves, as well as some miscellaneous items like the plastic sleeves I store signed albums in or like the little easels that I use to prop things up with on my shelf. I will not be talking about uh, like trading supplies, so things like top loaders, um, things like that I'm not going to cover. So with that out of the way, let's start by going over the binders that I use. So there are a few different kinds of binders that I use and I'll just sort of briefly explain the differences between them and which ones I prefer. So most of the binders I use are just gonna be this sort of like plain D-ring binder. And I just get them on Amazon, not from a particular brand. I'll provide a link down below, but honestly I have some from a few brands and I think they're all pretty comparable. I don't have any complaints. Just to compare, I also have these better binders, which are a specific variety of binder from Staples. Um, I got them on the Staples website. Personally, I don't really have a preference between these two kinds of binders. Some people do, some people really prefer the Staples Better binder. I think they're really equivalent for my preferences. The only preference that I have when it comes to binders is D-ring versus O-ring. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So D-ring binders essentially just have rings that are shaped like a backwards letter D. And you can compare that with an O-ring binder, which has rings shaped like the letter O. Personally, I strongly prefer D-ring binders. The reason being that for the same size of ring, say comparing a one inch D-ring versus a one inch O-ring, you can fit a lot more pages in a D-ring. And also you can fit more pages without the possibility of like the binder pages curving. So my recommendation is that you definitely make sure that your binders are D-ring rather than O-ring, if, especially if you're planning to store a lot of stuff in that binder. The other thing I wanted to compare is the difference between your standard American size binder and your standard Korean size binder. So I have a few of these binders that are like official merch from K-pop groups. So here's a red velvet one, an NCT one, and a twice one. And the difference between the Korean binders and the um, American binders that I have is a couple things. One difference being the height of the binders. So you can see it here when they're next to each other that there is a slight difference. The American binders are sized to fit eight and a half by 11 size pages, and the Korean binders are sized to fit a four size pages. And for the most part, there isn't a difference with that, except you will notice if you store A4 size posters in your binders. So for example, the A4 size posters that like SM releases for their artists quite often, if you store them in one of these binders, you will find that they stick out of the top just slightly. Personally, I've never had something get damaged because of that but it is noticeable that they stick out and so I just wanted to mention it just in case. The other difference is if you are buying a binder divider that is manufactured in Korea. So the rings on the Korean made binders are slightly smaller in, di in diameter than the American binders and I'll show you what I mean by that. So here I have some official SM merch. So this is a binder divider that is made to fit Korean size binders and as you can see I can turn it no problem, right? It fits perfectly in the binder. Now compare that with the same divider in an American binder where you can see it fits in the binder, but turning it is very difficult because it's just slightly, the holes in the divider are just slightly too small for the diameter of the rings. So that's just something to keep in mind if you ever plan on getting, you know, some binder divider that's like official merch from the group. So next I wanted to talk about pocket pages that we use in our binders. So for these clear pocket pages, I pretty much always use one of two brands, either Guardhouse Shield or Ultra Pro. And I also will note briefly, um, all the Ultra Pro pages I have are the Ultra Pro Platinum series as opposed to the Ultra Pro Silver series. I've used both. Personally, I don't think the difference is that big, but just so you know, I have all the Platinum series ones. Before I get into a breakdown of the difference between the two brands, like per size of pocket for each page, I do want to preface it by saying that no matter which of these you choose, they're both going to protect your items equally. You know, they're both polypropylene, they're both acid-free. 
if one of, if one of these brands is more convenient for you to purchase either by price or by availability you know it's fine neither of these is going to ruin your items i'm just going to get into the nitty-gritty of like why specifically i prefer one over the other in general between the two i prefer guardhouse shield the reason being mainly that all of the guardhouse shield sleeves are a consistent a4 size you can see that all of these are except for like maybe like one or two millimeters difference the same width and height and you can compare that with these which are just like i don't know if you can tell all different widths and the reason that that matters to me is because i often store things in my binder where i'm mixing di different pocket pages different sizes of pages within the same binder and what i found when i did that was that if i was mixing different widths of pages the larger ones would start to curve around the smaller ones and that would eventually like damage your items so because of that i really prefer the consistency and uniformity of the guardhouse shield pages which are all the same size and don't have that problem that being said when it comes to purchasing these ultra pro is definitely at least in america the more available brand i think they're even sold in target in some places or like in some hobby stores you can definitely get them on amazon as well whereas guardhouse shield i have to get them on ebay and another thing I want to know about Guardhouse Shield is that, you know, I see a lot of people recommend like specific sellers or just only talk about one seller. And there are a couple sellers that are like really popular but go out of stock quite often because they are popular. And what I want to say is, you know, these sleeves are sold by quite a lot of sellers. I personally have purchased them from like five or six different sellers. And as long as I pay attention to you know, the templates that they're posting to show like the the sleeves and the, you know, seller rating to make sure that they're like a good seller in general on eBay, I have always gotten the exact same sleeves. So you don't need necessarily to rely on just one specific seller for these. Um, you can get them from a lot of sellers. And when you do that, it's much more available than, you know, if you are relying on one seller. I will link my favorite seller down below which is mainly my favorite just because they're based in Seattle and I'm in California, so, you know, it's very quick shipping. But again, I've purchased them from many sellers and never really had a problem, you know, getting different sleeves. Okay, so first up, I wanted to compare one pocket sleeves. So I have on the left an Ultra Pro 8.5 by 11 sleeve, and on the right a Guardhouse Shield A4 sleeve. And I do have just an 8.5 by 11 sheet of black cardstock here so you can see the sleeves better. So you can see perhaps that, um, you know, the Ultra Pro sleeve is the exact same size as an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And you can compare that with the Guardhouse Shield A4 sleeve, which has, you know, obviously some overhang on the size because it is sized to fit A4 sheets of paper, which are a little bit bigger than eight and a half by 11. Personally, I don't have a preference between these as much as I use them for different things because at the end of the day they are different sizes for most items that need to be stored in one pocket i just rely on the ultra pro eight and a half by 11s you know they're big enough they do the job however there are some k-pop items like the sm posters that get released occasionally which are a four size and those will not fit in these ultra pro sleeves they will stick out at the top so for those i do use these guardhouse shield a4 sleeves and they fit like exactly like perfectly flush um i wish there was a little bit more room at the top personally but they do cover them much better than the ultra pro sleeves next for two pocket sleeves personally i always use guardhouse shield now i don't have any ultra pro two pocket pages with me i do have this bcw page but i did look it up and the bcw pages are the same size as the ultra pro pages so I wanted to include this anyway as a comparison with the Guardhouse Shield. So as you can see, the um, if, if I size this for where the pages are, you can see that the um, BCW and also the Ultra Pro pages are much thinner than an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So they're much smaller than um, all the other or most of the other Ultra Pro sleeves. I believe because they're sized to fit like 5 by 7 postcards. So as a result, they're much smaller on the side um, and i found that you know it works for some items but i do have some items that i need to put in two pocket pages 
that are simply too wide for these sleeves and it just doesn't work. So because of that, I really prefer these guardhouse shield sleeves. So you can see they are the width of an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. They are, if I compare them side by side, you can see the width difference is pretty drastic and they're a little bit taller as well. You can see that this sleeve sticks out over the top here, whereas this is like flush. So yeah, I don't even use these anymore. I just strictly um, use these since they're big enough to fit really anything I would want to store in, in, in them in a two pocket page. So next I wanted to talk about three pocket sleeves. And first I wanted to talk about a sort of odd size of three pocket sleeve, which is these ones that are sort of like long and thin three pockets like this. These are from Guardhouse Shield. They are sort of a niche size and not, you know, necessarily widely useful, but they are a little bit useful if you want to store something long and thin like a bookmark. Um, I do use them for that purpose. I will say because the pocket depth is so short, uh, if an item is really heavy, it's liable to like fall out or slip out. So that's just something to keep in mind. But primarily for this section, I wanted to compare the Ultra Pro three pocket pages and the like standard Guardhouse Shield three pocket pages. So you can see already that the layout of these is quite different. The Ultra Pro ones have a sort of like blank spot, a pocket that you can't use that goes around the top and the top pocket is centered between the two on either side. Whereas on the Guardhouse Shield, or I think this is actually, this one specifically is from a brand called Dunwall, but it's the same as the Guardhouse Shield ones. There is, you know, a sort of thin margin in between the two middle ones. And then there's also this, instead of having the top pocket centered, it has it off to the side with a sort of little thin pocket here. Now I kind of use these for different things and people are gonna have like different preferences as far as these go. Some people really prefer the Ultra Pro ones because they really want the top pocket to be centered between the two bottom ones. Personally, I kind of prefer these ones, mainly because these, I don't like having like a white space where you can see the next page. You can see like through to the next page, you know what I mean? And that's what this does. You can like see through to the next page. Whereas this, I can put something in all four of these pockets. And in that way, you know, there's less white space where I can see the next page through. And I don't necessarily really mind that the, um, you know, top pocket is off center, that doesn't bother me. What I will say, however, is that because of this sort of like thin, you can see that this sort of like thin margin between the two pockets on the bottom, these pockets are just a hair, just a hair thinner than these bottom pockets. And I actually have found that that matters. I've multiple times tried to store something in these pockets and found that it just barely won't fit in the bottom pockets. And in that case, I will use this sleeve instead. So for four pockets, um, I don't have an Ultra Pro one, but I do have a random BCW one kicking around, which again, I believe is like the same size as the Ultra Pro one. So it was suitable to compare for the purposes of what I'm doing. Um, I personally only use Guardhouse Shield four pockets. The reason being, you know, just quite, quite simply the size difference. As you can see, you know, if I position this right, this BCW four pocket is slightly thinner than an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and about the same, just barely a little bit taller. And you can compare that with the Guardhouse Shield, which, you know, is the same width as an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and pretty significantly taller at the top. So, you know, if I can get a bigger pocket, I'm going to choose the one that's got a bigger pocket. So I only use these ones. So next I did want to talk about five pocket pages. I do have these five pocket pages, which if you can see, have three horizontally positioned pages and then two vertical ones like that. These are from Ultra Pro. And as far as I'm aware, they're aren't any five pocket pages from Guardhouse Shield. In any case, these are sort of like a niche pocket design. Um, you know, I don't use them that often. I only have a few of them, but if you are looking for something that has this item specifically of this size, you know, this is something that is available. For example, the postcards that came with um, Irene and Solgi's Monster fit perfectly in these Ultra Pro 5 pocket pages. And similar to the last one, I do have a six pocket page as well. Sort of like the opposite of the last option. Um, I've only, I only have these from the brand Guardhouse Shield. So they are, you know, two, two and two pockets like that. And these are nice for those items that are sort of like too big for a nine pocket page, but sort of look 
kind of dumb in a four pocket. Again, this is sort of like a, a very niche or like specialized kind of pocket size. You absolutely don't need these, but they are available if you want them. And last, I wanted to compare nine pocket pages. So as you can see, these are both, um, you know, pretty standard nine pocket sized pages. And my preference between these two is a little bit different for the other pocket sizes. If I'm going to be mixing pages um, in terms of like pocket sizes within the same binder. So if in one binder, I'm going to have like nine pocket pages, two pocket pages, three pocket pages all mixed together. I prefer the guardhouse shield for the same reason that I mentioned before, you know, all of them are A4 size. You're not going to have your pages curving around each other because one page is like thinner or larger than the other. But if I'm doing a binder that's only got photo cards in it, so I'm only using nine pocket pages, I actually prefer the Ultra Pro. The reason being that I slightly prefer the feel of the Ultra Pro pages compared to the Guardhouse Shield in general. And also the size of the pockets is a little bit smaller in the Ultra Pro pages. So a sleeved photo card fits perfectly in an Ultra Pro um, pocket, whereas a sleeved photo card has a little, little bit of wiggle room in a guardhouse shield, and I just prefer they stay more snugly in place. So I use them for two different things. I like both of them and use them for different purposes. One thing I will note is that for some reason, and I've noticed this like time and time again, I think it's happened to me like almost 10 times. I'm not even kidding. It's happened like many times. Um, these Ultra Pro nine pocket pages are really prone to splitting, specifically right on this bottom right pocket on this outside seam. I have had it happen several times where I try to insert a photo card in this bottom right pocket and it just splits all down the side. I don't know why that is. It's happened enough times that I know it's not a coincidence. And actually I've seen it happen to someone else when I was watching their photo card storing video. So I know it's not just me. Um, ultimately it isn't, doesn't happen often enough for me to like stop buying them. Um, I haven't lost, like again, I've lost like less than 10 sleeves to it. So it's not the end of the world, but I just wanted to mention it just in case. So next I want to talk about photo card sleeves. So the sleeves I use for individual photo cards. Personally, I only sleeve photo card size items. Anything larger, I don't sleeve. Um, it's just too much of a hassle for me. I, it's not worth the trouble. So the way I'll structure this, I'll first talk about clear sleeves, then colored sleeves. Then at the end, I'll talk about hollow sleeves. I do have both clear and colored hollow sleeves, but I figured I'd lump them all together because I buy them in the same place. Just makes more sense to talk about all of them together. So for clear sleeves, I only use Dragon Shield Clear Classic. In my experience, they're just the best quality, the thickest. Um, I just greatly prefer them to the other brands that are available. I get them in the standard size. And what that means, as you can see on the bottom, is that they're 63 by 88. So I'll show you. Here I have a photo card sleeved in one of um, these Dragon Shield sleeves. So you can see that with a standard size photo card, there is some space on either side. These sleeves in the standard size are exactly the size to fit inside a binder pocket page without having wiggle room on either side. They also come in a like smaller size, the Dragon Shield sleeves, which fit precisely to the photo card. So that's just something to keep in mind if you buy these, you know, make sure you know what you're buying, whether it's the standard size or the smaller close fit size foot um, sleeves. The other thing I wanted to show is the difference between um, a Dragon Shield sleeve and a penny sleeve. So for comparison, I have some BCW penny sleeves, which are, as you can see, two mil in thickness. So you can see when I go like this, that these are quite thin. They like move around very easily. And you can compare that to the Dragon Shield sleeve, which is much much thicker so that is why i prefer these compared to like other thinner sleeves the other thing i will say is that you know um the brand ultra pro is also quite popular for clear sleeves however um something i don't like about ultra pro sleeves is that they have a watermark on them i don't have any ultra pro clear sleeves to compare but when i get to colored sleeves i'll show you what i mean but yes i 
For the reason of the watermark, I prefer Dragon Shield greatly over Ultra Pro. So next, I will show you all of the colored sleeves that I use. So all of the colored sleeves that I use in my binders are from Dragon Shield. So just to take one out to compare, you can see that they are colored on one side and then the other side is clear for where you can see the photo card through. This one is matte, but they also have like shiny clear ones. So I will explain why I use Dragon Shield rather than Ultra Pro, but first I will do a brief overview of all the colors of Dragon Shield sleeves that I have and use. So first I will show you the classic sleeves, which have a shiny finish. We have turquoise, silver, fusion, which is a sort of burgundy color, black, and white. Next, the matte shades. So we have matte pink, matte petrol, which is sort of a dark blue-green, matte purple, matte slate, which is a very dark gray, and matte white. Now I did want to go over why I prefer, even for colored sleeves, Dragon Shield over Ultra Pro. So here I have a silver classic sized Dragon Shield sleeve, and here I have a lavender color Ultra Pro sleeve. So I prefer uh, Dragon Shield over Ultra Pro for two reasons. One being that uh, Ultra Pro sleeves have a watermark on them. So you can see right there that there's a watermark on the front of the sleeve. And some people, this doesn't bother them at all. They don't mind it. I know Ultra Pro sleeves are cheaper than Dragon Shield. So, you know, that is one reason to prefer them. But personally, I really hate the visual clutter of the watermark. I hate that it covers up the card. I don't know. It just really bothers me personally from like a visual clutter sense. So I don't really like it. And another thing I've noticed is that Ultra Pro sleeves are just slightly smaller than Dragon Shield sleeves. Um, than Dragon Shield standard size sleeves. They are just a little bit shorter. You can see the difference right there. Personally, that, now that's like such a minor difference. I know that's so nitpicky. Personally, I really hate seeing white space through to the next page in my binder. If I can get a slightly bigger uh, sleeve that will fit in the pocket and fill out the pocket more, obviously I'm gonna prefer it. Again, I know th these are both very nitpicky reasons, but just being honest, that's why I prefer Dragon Shield to Ultra Pro. They are slightly different in texture as well, I will know. I do think that the Dragon Shield sleeves are a little bit thicker than the Ultra Pro sleeves, just barely, not in a way that really matters, but it is something to note. So I have a few different kinds of hollow sleeves that I use, so I will show them to you briefly, and then I will explain where it is that I buy them. So first up, I do have some like clear hollow sleeves. So there are, they are see-through as you can see, no color. I've put black cardstock inside them for this so that you can actually see the hollow effect properly. But yeah, they are clear. So I have these, which are just a smooth hollow effect. I definitely like these the best. Then I have these, which have a sort of star effect and these, which look like sort of like jagged shards of glass. I have seen as well some hollow sleeves which have a rain or like a heart pattern on them. They're very cute, but I don't have any. Then for colored hollow sleeves, I have some sleeves which are colored on one side and then have the clear hollow on the other. So I have some white smooth effect ones, some purple smooth effect, and the same in black. Then I have some with this sort of jagged shards of glass pattern in white and in purple. Now, a lot of people use hollow sleeves and purchase them different places. I know a lot of people get them on Etsy. Personally, I buy my hollow card sleeves on AliExpress. If you've never used AliExpress before, it's sort of like a Chinese marketplace kind of website, um, sort of like Amazon or something like that with some pretty big differences, obviously. Um, for one, AliExpress is a lot cheaper than a lot of places that I've seen um, these cards sold. Honestly, I think a lot of the Etsy shops that sell hollow sleeves get their sleeves from AliExpress, um, just because I've seen the exact same sleeves sold on both places, but just for like a huge markup on Etsy. So that's sort of why I prefer to get them on AliExpress. You can get them there directly and much cheaper. Um, in addition, there's a lot more variety. I've seen more kinds of hollow sleeves sold there compared to other places. 
What I will say, um, however, is that there's also more risk when you're buying from AliExpress. You know, the same, there are lots of different shops there and they'll sort of, some of them will like sell the same items. So you sort of have to just rely on, you know, whether the shop has a lot of reviews or whether the particular item has been bought a lot of times to like be sure whether it's like a good bet or not. The other thing to note with AliExpress is that the shipping time is usually really long. You know, because it's shipping from China, um, I'd say one month is like a pretty standard shipping time for something from AliExpress. I've had stuff arrive quicker than one month, but I've also had stuff take like two months to arrive. Um, there's really no guarantee and it's different from every shop you buy from. Again, because of the way AliExpress is structured, I can't actually link you like a specific shop that I get them from because it's like different every time. So I would just recommend going there if you've used it before or, you know, if you're comfortable with it, going there, search hollow card sleeve and you will see a ton of different items listed with like the dimensions. You know, just pay attention to the dimensions of the card sleeve, the description of it to make sure that you're buying the right item. But personally, that's where I get all my sleeves and I've had a good experience with it. Again, as long as you're willing to deal with the risk and the shipping time, um, I haven't had any serious problems with it. Last, I wanted to show a couple miscellaneous items, not for use in my photo card binders, but for use with other things in my collection that, you know, I've had people ask about quite often. So first, I want to talk about the easels that I use to prop up items on my shelves. So what I use personally is something called a Gibson holder. So here's what the box looks like, for example. And here's what the item looks like. So you can see it's like a... Um, it's got like a foot with a little thing you can lean up against and then a um, stand for the back. So you pull on it like this and you can set your item up against it here and lean it back against the thing on the back here and in that way um, prop your items up. And what I like about these is I think they're made to hold like records or something like that. Um, Anyway, what I like about them is that they're very, very sturdy. They've got like a really wide base um, compared to like some of those like wooden easels that I've seen people use before. I just think these are really, really sturdy. And yeah, I've never had problems using these to prop up even like really thick items on my shelves. Like I have a photo book, like a really heavy photo book propped up on one of these and it works great. And last, I wanted to talk about the sleeves that I use to protect my signed albums. So personally, I use these BCW Thick Magazine bags. You can see they say Thick Magazine here because they have a little bit more room, I think, than um, other sleeves like this. So I have two versions. I have the standard version and I have the resealable version. So the difference being both of them have like a flap that sticks out at the end for the bag but the resealable ones there's like a thing you can pull off it's got like adhesive on it and you can fold the flap over and it will automatically adhere to the adhesive personally and that seems convenient but personally i prefer for the purpose of storing k-pop albums just the regular thick magazine bags and i'll show you why so here i have one of my signed albums that i keep stored in these bags the thing with these is, is that these magazine bags are made to store like a standard size, like magazine or comic book. So something that's like eight and a half by 11 size. And obviously most K-pop albums are not that size. So no matter what, you're going to have to like tape the sleeve, right? To get it to fit around the album properly. And to get it to fit like this where you don't have like stuff sticking up. So since you're gonna have to tape it anyway, I say don't bother with the resealable bag. The regular bag will do the job just fine. You're gonna have to tape it anyway. The resealable portion is honestly a little bit fiddly. I really prefer being able to just like customize the fit with tape um, compared to like whatever the other one offers. So that's my endorsement for sleeve to protect your signed albums. Get the thick magazine polypropylene bags from BCW. That, sh that should be able to hold most albums. Of course, pay attention to the dimensions. If you've got one of those signed albums that's like an A4 size, so like larger than eight and a half by 11, it's not gonna fit in these. You're gonna need to find some other kind of sleeve. But for anything smaller, um, smaller but thick still, you can make these work for those just fine. Okay, that was a very long overview of all the supplies I use in my K-pop collection. 
If you have any other questions, please put them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.